based upon you. And it's not based upon what I'm here to do for you and in you. You cannot do this for yourself. You cannot accomplish my righteousness in your own power. No matter how sincere you are and how much you stop doing. This is a work I have to do in you. The abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness is given to you. You don't bring me yours because yours is like filthy rags. Wow. When Israel, some in Israel heard this, they rejected it. Just like many of us reject it today. Because there's something about the human being that is so caught up in pride. We assume as long as we get the end result and actions right, that it doesn't matter really what kind of heart it's coming out of. In other words, as long as I buy a pot of beans or cook them for you and bring them over to you, the motive, the true motive for doing that ain't really that important. And God says, no, men look at the outward. Men look at the deeds, but I see the heart and I deal with the heart and the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can understand it? Who can decipher it and really show you what's really going on in the heart but me? Can you imagine that? Paul wrote it like this in 1 Corinthians 13, though I give my body to be burned and it not be motivated out of the love of God, it profits me absolutely nothing. Well, who would do that? There are people that do it every day. Make the ultimate sacrifice. And God's love didn't motivate it. We can't even imagine that because we are so locked into the action, the deed. You did it. You paid the ultimate sacrifice. It had to be love, the love of God. No, it wasn't. It was human love, not the love of God. Human love will drive you to do almost what seems to be absolutely crazy to the rest of the world, and you'll do it anyway. Because it makes sense in your value system to do it. God says, no, 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 no. I see the heart. I know you're capable of giving your body to be burned. And it still not be because I told you to. But because you really love me. Man. So he says, repent. Change. From what you rely on. Your understanding to mine. Here's how I see you. You were conceived in sin. You were shaped in iniquity. You're run by sin. Everything in your flesh loves it and yearns for it. No deed will change that. It's going to take my presence, my power, my ability in you to do that. But you won't even go after that if you really think that your way will work. You see, the end game is really not what we think it is. The end game is not me presenting to God all these precious and wonderful things that appear to impress him. The end game is Christ in us, the hope of glory. God working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, which means it involves God and you and me yielding to God. Doesn't involve us just coming up with the right things even that he said in his book to do in terms of our actions and good deeds. It involves repentance and putting our trust in God. If you're watching and you've never really done that, you're not saved. You may be in a church and you may think you're saved, but you're not saved. You're not, who are you to tell me I'm not saved? The Bible, I'm talking the word of God. This is not my opinion. <laughs>